Good afternoon, Tyler. This stuff needs to be on camera. Yeah, because that means we're not attacking anybody. We're just talking. Like, yeah, is, is it? Are you really recording this, dude? You're recording this. Oh, cool. Oh, let's let this happen. Let's let it go. So, I'm, I'm Pat Riley. I'm a physical therapist um, in uh, south of Houston. I'm on a tropical island uh, south of Houston. And uh, I do physical therapy. What's so, up? Tyler Morrison. Uh, I'm an exercise physiologist and uh, strength coach by trade. And we got Jeremias Martinez back here on the camera. You'll yes. never see him. Don't even try. <laughs> He's got coffee too, even though he doesn't drink it. Sipping on some coffee right now. Not water. Not water. Yeah. Coffee. This coffee. Maybe a little whiskey. A little whiskey. You'll never know. Never know. <laughs> so, Pat, what's going on, man? Nothing much, man. Um, just appreciating our shirts and uh, trying to figure out why our shirts, they look a little different. I'm not sure Wait a second. Mine says 45. Yours says 45. How come yours is bigger than mine? It's density, Tyler. It's different density and masses of this uh, material on the shirt. You're both 45 pound place on our shirts. Different densities. Come on. Yours is clearly bigger than mine. It's not about the size, man, but the density. Is it always bigger than mine? It's sometimes bigger than yours. <laughs> but the thing is, the density is the same. <laughs> That's what matters, folks. It's the density. Oh, man. I love it, man. I love it, too. I love density. Maybe some people will have something to say about that. I don't know. Maybe it's the camera angle, too? Yeah, maybe. But I think it's the same. I can't see a difference from my vantage point of yours. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Can I, think can I touch yours? Not really. I mean, <laughs> six feet, right? Six feet distance. Six feet. Time <laughs> to respect the rules. Oh, hey, let me ask you, when's the last What's time that? you lifted? Last time I lifted, I actually lifted uh, some bricks downstairs. Okay. I put these Bricks uh, of what? Bricks of bricks? I don't know. What that <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yeah. illegal though, right? Of course not. Okay, good, good, no, good, I, good. I don't have a steady job right now, but I'm definitely not trying to dive into any black market activities. Does it Did you right use now. good form? Maybe. Yeah? I recorded some of it. I can, yeah. I can show it later on, maybe. And I can and check it out with the, the biomechanical analysis. I'm sure. You can do it, or maybe some of the great people out there can do it, too, because I know they'll give us objective, unbiased uh, nice. feedback, you know? Unopinionated, nice. unfiltered, unjudgmental. Unlike that Turkish get up you did. Man. What's one of the Turkish? Oh, why? I don't know. I heard. I heard you had some some feedback on a Turkish get up that you did. Well, there's rumors that there was some feedback regarding the the style of the classic Turkish get up, <laughs> and I was given a YouTube video of a very fit model doing a Turkish get up. Yeah. And uh, that changed my world. Nice. And nice. Um, I know to reference YouTube before I do anything on social media again. <laughs> so tell me, what was what was wrong with your Turkish get up? What did they call out on you? Oh, they just said it wasn't right. How's it not right? I don't know. I asked him. They just said it isn't right. Here, watch this video. Was it was it a video of that individual? No, it was somebody else in the Turkish get up. Oh, so, so, so she didn't even demonstrate no, oh, yeah. the Turkish get up. Well, this individual may have not have done that. But, <laughs> but it's all good, y'all. We're not trying to point any fingers at anyone. We're not pointing any fingers No fingers anybody. are being pointed at anyone. That's, that's not our goal here. Our goal is to keep it real. Talk about life, love, and lifting. I like that. Primarily love. I'm just kidding now. <laughs> There'll be some love and life conversations. <laughs> because why do we lift? Because we love it. Well, also, we do it for the love of it. What well, we do. Yeah, that's what you said. Right, I'm right. Sorry. Too much coffee. Too much coffee. <laughs> I'm going to tell you another thing. Life is also important. Life. We lift weights because we have a purpose. We have a goal. We're not trying to impress people from high school, people on social media, or uh, dating site applicants. We're just simply looking for ourselves. You're right, man. And for that, I mean, our goal is to be driven and uh, based upon whatever you want. And it's not just super superficial stuff like lifting weights and being cut. So that's why I maintain a 22% body fat percentage at all times. It's perfect. Just to show people I can understand their lifting needs. 22%? I, I just made a number up, kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling a bit of a, when I drive the car sometimes, so I need to, yeah. definitely 20%. But anyways, I know how to lift weights, that, but like right now, I'm going through this phase of love life that, you know, it's good. The, the cortisol levels are a little higher, 
and higher high. than your testosterone? My testosterone levels are very high. <laughs> <laughs> they are very high at all times. But can you see how big it's 45 pounds? How big it is? 45 pounds. My voice is deep. <laughs> testosterone is always. Look at the size of my 45 high. pound plate. But it I swear matter. it's smaller. But man. it's 45 pounds. Your testosterone levels are stupid. You can trust us because we're professionals. <laughs> Strictly professionals. Nah, it's, <laughs> it's good, weights. Man. We it's like good. lifting, but as you can tell, there's a casual tone. Uh, a lot of people out there, you know, I mean, it's a little more, a lot of that tiger or dragon energy. Yeah. You know. Uh, but we, we have that inside too, but right now we're going to have a laid back approach in the future, break down exercise, fitness, movement, uh, rehab, uh, any questions y'all might have. So, uh, should be a fun journey the next few days or weeks or years. However long it takes, man. How long it takes. I'm looking forward to it. Because as we all know, training is a way of life. Yes, sir. And you can't just do it one time and get jacked. Yep. You know, you got to treat it like a lifestyle, man. You got to yep. keep it up. doesn't matter how old you are, you know. Yep. You got to move. Our bodies are made to move, you know. It doesn't matter if your VMO fires first. Or if your TA <laughs> fires and stabilizes your spine. Or, uh, you know, yeah. your spine's out of alignment. I mean, you're still going to have to move. You still got to move, yeah. you know. Um, it's just, just one of those things. You got to move. You got to be strong. You know, the stronger you are, the more resilient you are. You know? That's true. So it, it's okay to, to, to be in that, in that age bracket uh, of 80 or so and lift weights. You know? It's okay. It's a yeah. normal thing. That's the good thing about social media, man. You're seeing more people, men and women, above 50, 60, like 80 right. year olds, like deadlifting. Like women right. in their 70s, 80s, like 200, 300 pounds. And that's, uh, that's even motivating for me. Right. So I go to the gym and lifting that weight, it's like I can, I should push myself more if I should, if I yeah. need to. But I should be doing it for myself. But dang, that's pretty impressive for me. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. I don't know, that kind of motivates me too. Because, like, you know, going back to what you were saying about just getting jacked, like, I don't think phase is getting jacked, as they say in the streets. or gains like try to bring out the air force in my early 20s but I walked on to play college football it's an excellent shape but you know after a while i was trying to get into physical therapy school i quit playing football college level and was focused on uh, like weightlifting and exercising and when i started having to pull back from exercise getting better grades getting into graduate school yeah and when i got to pt school uh actually dropped that's the big thing i noticed recently tyler i'm being honest this is fine being honest with your life this is life this is life this is a live life speech i've realized that I started lifting, stopped lifting heavy and lifting as well, eating healthy. When I was at physical therapy school, I was kind of depressed because everybody was saying like how... Which I is a healthy. school that sets you up to get people stronger and get people better. healthy, get people moving. The biggest thing is right. prior level of function. Our job is to get people back to where they were right. at before, whether they were a bodybuilder, a stuntman, or a couch potato. And that's what's interesting, that the variety, but there's a bias. Like at least 10 years ago when I was in graduate school, that lifting weight was bad for you. Right. And I and I would go to the gym, even the medical doctors, the med students. I I put three sixty five. That was the heaviest. That's the last time I squatted heavy. I was squatting three sixty five, and I was doing triples. And because I was afraid to put four plates for four hundred five, and the med students and PT students were like, "You're a bad example. If you get hurt in here, right. like yada yada yada." And that, that messed with my mind. So that took you down. Yeah, it took you down a little, little, little rabbit hole. Dude, yeah, I just stuck to like the uh, called the the beach muscle work, the upper body. Doing you know, 225 on the squat, right? Yeah. Not to scare anybody. Staying real conservative with it, right? And being conservative, I started getting strength imbalances. There's a lot of weird yeah. stuff in my programming, and it got me depressed, got in a cycle, and I just didn't lift as much. And that was my journey. It took me like almost yeah. 10 or 15 years to get out of that. And that's today. Well, and that's, you know, that's the thing with it, though. It, 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 it takes time, man. You know, and you've got a lot of experience in this field, you know, in, in, in the weight room, under the bar, you've got a lot of experience. And it still takes time. You got guys who are just lifting. You know, we hope some of you that are paying attention and watching us, we hope some of you are brand new to lifting, right? That's who we want to talk to you. We want to talk to the guys who've been lifting for a long time. We want to talk to, to everybody, man. You know, we want to be able to relate to everybody, you know, because that's 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 our goal, man. You know, and and it's important to us. It's important to us to to. Just be in the weight room, to be in there, to understand the science, to talk about the science, 
to also talk about the pseudoscience and the bro science too. Because a lot of the bros, you, know, you think back to the old hypertrophy guys, you know, Muscle Beach over in California, yeah. you know, those guys, man, <coughs> they knew what they were doing. Yeah. If you look at them, man, they were jacked, you know. But that's not what it's all about. They had a goal, you know. So you got some people who think the only way, the only reason to lift weights is to be a bodybuilder. Right? Hey, bodybuilders are athletes too, right? Mm -hmm. I would never want to do that. That's not me. Mm -hmm. I train more for performance, you know? Uh, but, you know, I have this feeling that everyone's an athlete because we're all competing for something, right? Whether it's to just get through class or whatever, get out of that slump, you know, uh, just, just continue pressing forward. Or, you know, you, you got somebody in, in your practice of physical therapy, you know, they're, they're, they're just trying to get out of bed, you know. But, hey, what do you have to do? You got to be able to produce force, right? You got to be able to get strong. So, in the future, we'll hit progressive overload and some, some little terms like that. You know, we want to keep it as real as possible, but we also want to hit that science, too. Yeah, and I, it, but I mean, art meets science. You know, the physical therapy, there's a phrase professionally, APTA says, you know, the, the science of healing with the art of caring. Um, art good. and science are related. That's what's so hard we, yeah, the term we call evidence based practice. You got from physicians, right. and even in exercise performance, evidence is really important, but it's really hard to have evidence if there's no context. Uh, and that's what's so hard. It's not like chemistry, we can lock somebody in a room or apply a medicine and kind of trace it throughout the bloodstream and, and measure it. Performance and physical therapy, your psychosocial factors. It's so important to know the individuals, and right. their wants and their motivations. Let's try to get them going. And so that's on one end. The other end, as far as you were saying, by Muscle Beach, people might make fun of the gym rats or the right. meatheads. Meatheads I mean, and look, stuff. Look at what the art or life leads to science. So now people like Nordic curls. Nordic curls are Russian curls. Right. But Sir Margo was doing that back in the 90s. And even in the 80s, a lot of strength coaches around the country were doing that, but it was very popular. Now it got blown up through social media in right. a few months or a year or two. Yeah, now everyone's it's blown doing up, man. Russian curls or Nordic curls. Now there's research supporting that for hamstring rehab. And not a lot of people did that. But once again, they needed some meatheads like Louis Simmons in, uh, in uh, you know, West Side Barbell up in Ohio. He, he was a machinist. He actually just made equipment. Yeah. There's no evidence to support that stuff. But his guys were breaking records. And kind of that art or life led to science supporting that. So we're looking at both sides of the coin. Because yeah. I mean, yeah, we don't want to do pseudoscience and weird stuff, but at the same time, we have some common sense, look at basic mechanics and right. like physiology, and there, there's a lot of things we can use that we can know at a basic level. When you go to undergrad and grad school, and you just apply that, then you use reasoning and get your results. And not necessarily re using research to kind of guide you and help you clean up, but not being your god, because truly, your knowledge is your, not to say your god, but truly your base, and you have right. to have the knowledge base. So if you don't have a professional degree or an exercise science background, it's okay, we can help you out a little bit, give you yeah, some resources. Sure, yeah. It's, it's quite the journey. I mean, whether you're saying, even though, like, I was in Air Force, I was in avionics. I was not in this in my early 20s. I went to school and did this in my 20s. And, yeah. Oh, you were in the Air Force, too. And you, yeah, you, you know, you we, this. You yeah, it, but, you know, we were both athletes in high school, too. So our journey with this started <clears throat> young, you know, but, but when I was in high school, like, I thought I knew how to train and stuff, you know, but, uh, you know, and, and just like, as you grow older, you start to, to learn that you don't really, especially with education, the more education you get, you realize that you, it's like, wow, you know. I didn't even knew, I didn't even know anything, man, you know, and so I still, I question myself all the time, every, every client that I work with, every athlete that I work with, I'm always asking that question, is this in that athlete's best interest? Look at that work, you have do I know what I'm talking about, right? And as a professional, I feel like that's an appropriate question to ask yourself, you know, not out loud. And you don't want to let that person know. <laughs> like if I was working with Pat, I wouldn't want him to know that I'm questioning myself. It's but, like confident. Right, you know, you've got to have that confidence, you know, but you got to always be able to answer why. You know, as professionals, if we can't answer why we're doing something, why are you doing it? You know? And if, so you had to question yourself starting right. in high school with high confidence levels, testosterone levels uh, when you're younger. Uh, it relates to kind of a, something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. 
Okay. It's work. Uh, it's basically like as wisdom increases, you go through little peaks and valleys of how much your your confidence is. Show them. Let it. Let let them see that. So wh wherever you're at on the scale of intensity, whether you're starting out in high school, or you're in college, you got an undergrad degree, you're a medical doctor, you're an accountant, physical therapist, strength coach, athletic trainer, whoever you are, you're somewhere on the scale of knowledge. It just takes time. And it's what we're going to take about, because I mean, I've had 10 years of uh, practice experience as a physical therapist. Tyler's had over a decade of experience in as different levels of strength coach. coach. Yeah. I mean, in the Air Force and yeah. working at schools and working with uh, our patients post rehabilitation. Yeah. I mean, so we have that duration, but the time, it's going to be with everybody. So uh, wherever you're at in life, you know, just know that seek knowledge. You have any questions? That's where I'm in this laid back approach, honestly. You know, just be serious for a moment. It's like, because sometimes people get too alpha out there. It's kind of uncomfortable to learn when people are being alpha and, and trying to express their testosterone or adulthood out there. So uh, we want to be professionals and be cool with y'all. But at the we same do time, have high testosterone. Very high testosterone. We are alphas. Just sidebar, but exactly. You know, I affect the size of objects on our shirts sometimes, but not all the time. Hey, it's I density. forgot about it's it. Density. Now, I, oh man, it's you density. brought attention to it again, man. It's density is the same. <laughs> that being said, uh, we want to create this laid back environment because we want to be able to help you all. And uh, we're not going to have a, a, a urinating contest. Right. Can you say urinating? The distance. The distance contest. Is it about the distance? About the distance. Or is <laughs> so, that's what's up. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, right on. Well, hey, well cheers to all you guys out there, man. And uh, yeah. we hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, we'll keep these coming. You know, if you got comments, suggestions, whatever. Let us know. Yeah. And like they say on the social media sphere, it's what? Like like, comment, subscribe, follow, stalk, whatever you do. Share. Share. Do whatever. Do, do whatever. Yeah. But don't hate. Well, we can hate. You whatever. can hate. It's whatever. If you hate, if you hate it, if you hate it, you better have a reason why. Yeah, have a good reason why you hate. If you can't answer why, it's invalid. And you know what? At least have a YouTube link. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs>